I think every farmer more and more is looking at sustainability. Sustainability can quite often mean being cost effective uh, and not being blasé or, or wasteful. You want to be mindful of every product you're purchasing, using, distributing, whether it be water management, fertilizer use, uh, all of these things are being done with a lot more care and passion uh, than say they may have done 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So Skybury was established principally as a coffee farm, being the first uh, plantation to export coffee overseas. We're now the largest grower of red papaya in Australia. The single biggest important factor for a farmer is the quality of their soil. Without good quality soil and without soil being there, you can't grow anything. We actually control and recycle our nutrient runoff. So instead of that going into local water courses, we capture that runoff through a series of water storages and then we can recycle that and reuse those nutrients. Basically the farm runs on a pretty automated system. We kick the pumps off first thing in the morning and then they just cycle through block after block. We use a drip irrigation system. In our terms, we think that's the most efficient use of water. We're pumping directly from the irrigation source from Tinaru Dam. At each pump house, we first filter the water to try and remove as much algae and particulates that, that are gonna block up the irrigation system. We then introduce nutrition as well. We don't mass feed the trees. We prefer to trickle on the, the nutrition day by day. So we supply the trees with exactly what they need every day of the week. We do a fortnightly irrigation check um, and a part of that irrigation check is we're looking at, at soil uh, moisture content, um, how much it's holding, uh, are we putting on enough. The thing we like here on Skybury uh, is, is fairly primitive. Uh, it's a soil auger and what we're doing is we're probing different depths and distances away from our irrigation line. So we know that directly underneath the line is going to have good moisture content, but we, what we want to see is how far is that spread traveling throughout the profile. We want to assist maximum root development without wasting water and, and nutrition through leaching and, and runoff. Are we on the money? Um, is it too wet or is it too dry? And pulsing is meant to be one of the most efficient ways to water in terms of the amount of lateral movement you get rather than just, again, one big hit. Dad and I were talking two years ago and we said, okay, do we want to get bigger or should we get smarter about what we're doing on the land that we have? And a technique that's not new by any means is double cropping. We do plant the papaya first, we then implant our coffee underneath. So we've got all this extra shade, lowering the temperature of the mounds. Shade grown coffee, we've noticed a significant acceleration. So by two years, we've got coffee in the ground that looks like it's four years old. When we thought about the idea of double cropping, we said for sure the inputs are gonna be higher. We're gonna need double the water, twice the fertilizer, but in actual fact, it's only about a 25% increase. So some of those savings must come down to the fact that we've got lower soil temperatures and, and the moisture that we're providing, even though it's only marginally more, it's being better utilised. We've been working in partnership with Northern Gulf for a number of years now. They've provided us with some very detailed maps with the contouring, uh, and that, that's a big thing for us because when you're setting up a paddock for the first time, uh, if you get the contouring right, the paddocks are so much better off for it. The worst thing you want to be doing is have the first rains come along, freshly prepared paddock, and, and there goes all your topsoil. At Skybury, our sustainability approach is, is governed by an environmental action plan, which sets out key elements of our sustainability approach. And one of the reasons we sort of formalise that plan is we were doing a lot of the elements before anyway, but on very much on an ad hoc basis, and their effectiveness was always anecdotal. If you're keeping records for the sake of keeping records and you'll never use them, then they're a waste of time. But if you're keeping records and that information can be tr translated into real-time data and give you a good um, basis for evaluation, then, then that's invaluable. So I think those are the things that will set a good farmer aside from a great farmer. So it's about recognising trends and, and being able to predict them before they 
before they cost you money.